Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Today's big idea comes from Marshall Rosenberg and his pioneering book, Nonviolent Communication. As always, we hope we can inspire you, help you grow your mind, and motivate you to be the best you. In the book, Rosenberg shares with us a better way of communicating with others. He calls it nonviolent communication, a language of life. Communication is a fundamental building block of everyday life. If we want to function well in society, we need to learn to communicate effectively with the people surrounding us. Often when we communicate with others, irrational conflicts and misunderstandings arise, and we end up leaving conversations feeling disregarded or in despair. This is where nonviolent communication enters the stage. At its core is the belief that all human beings have the capacity for compassion and empathy. We only resort to harmful behavior when we don't identify more effective strategies. The purpose of nonviolent communication is to help us connect with ourselves and others in a way that makes compassionate given natural. It is not about convincing people to do what we want, but to create a connection with another person where everyone's needs are met. Nonviolent communication is a way to resolve differences peacefully. It is all about empathetical listening and honest expressing. It teaches us to understand and express our feelings and to hear our own deeper needs and those of others. It evolves around two fundamental questions. Number one, what is alive in you? Or put another way, what are you feeling? Number two, what would make your life more wonderful? Meaning, what unfulfilled needs do you have that I can help you meet? It seems straightforward, but expressing emotions and needs is not easy. Many of us have never learned to acknowledge our own feelings. We have grown up being told things like, boys aren't scared, or girls shouldn't get angry. And as a result, many people hide how they actually feel, even from themselves. Nonviolent communication helps us to communicate our feelings clearly. Nonviolent communication distinguishes between real expression of emotions and statements which are in fact descriptions of what we are thinking, not what we are feeling. Let us give you a couple of examples where people think they are expressing a feeling, when in fact they are expressing an opinion, a criticism, or a moral judgment. Number one, when I feel is followed by that, like, or as if. For example, I feel like you should know better. Number two, when I feel is used together with pronouns. For example, I feel I am constantly working. Number three, when I feel is used with names or nouns. For example, referring to people, I feel Amy has acted irresponsibly. None of these statements is actually letting the other person know what you are feeling. Instead, you should simply name the emotion you are feeling without any judgment. For example, I feel sad because, or I feel angry since, and so on. Expressing our feelings clearly is very important, but we need to also express the need behind the feeling by making a clear request of what we want from the other person. Judgments, criticisms, and interpretations of others are all estranged expressions of our needs. And when we use them, we imply that the person in front of us is behaving wrongly, when in fact we all know is that the person isn't acting according to our beliefs and values. If someone says, you never listen to me, it is them telling you that their need to be heard is not being met. But because the statement is made as a judgment, the recipient is likely to hear criticism. And criticism often leads to self-defense and counter-attacking instead of understanding. The more directly we can connect our feelings and our needs, the easier it is for others to respond compassionately. So, focus on your own needs instead of on what is wrong with others. Imagine an interaction between two colleagues, Alan and Bart. They have a meeting scheduled for 1 p.m. Alan arrives to the meeting on time. Bart, however, doesn't arrive until 1.15 p.m., leaving Alan frustrated. As soon as Bart enters the room, Alan blurts out, It is really annoying that you are always late for meetings. You are an irresponsible person. If Alan was familiar with nonviolent communication, the conversation could go like this instead. I feel angry because you are late. I would like to start the meeting on time, since it will otherwise disrupt my calendar for the rest of the day. Can I please ask you to be on time for our next meeting? Nonviolent communication also teaches us that we cannot be responsible for each other's feelings but we can be responsible for how we choose to react. Let's end the video with a tip on how to best express our needs. Instead of expressing our needs with a kick-me attitude that implies that they are a burden, Rosenberg suggests that we use a Santa Claus attitude. 
showing the world that our needs are a precious gift. We hope you have enjoyed this video on Marshall Rosenberg's nonviolent communication. Please remember to give the video a like and please consider subscribing to the channel. Your support is our happiness. Take care and we will see you soon.